This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey, gorgeous. Before we get into this episode, I just want to let you know the wait list for my energetic aesthetics training is now open. If you're ready to bring a holistic approach that is grounded in science into your aesthetics practice, this is it. I'll share more as details develop, but for now, add your email to the wait list and be the first to know when it is officially available. The link is in the show notes and over in my Instagram bio at Michaela McLean. But for now, let's get on to the episode. Hi, welcome back. I have a special guest here with me today, Derek Davenport. He is a 2-4 mental projector with Sun in Leo. And he, so yeah, Leo Sun and Sagittarius Moon, Scorpio Rising. Welcome, Derek. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. I'm like, I'm laughing because I already said when we hopped on, I'm like taking, taking my life in my hands with uh, trying to record on day one of Mercury retrograde. So we're going to hope, hope everything <laughs> saves beautifully, you know, sound goes well. I tested everything out. So, you know, like fingers crossed and like, <laughs> Hey, we're, we're trying to, trying to be careful here. So, um, so yeah. So like introduce yourself. Want to hear a little bit about you from your own perspective? Yeah. So, um, like you said, my name is Derek Davenport. I have um, always been in the realm of helping people. My initial career, I wanted to be a pediatrician, but um, went to school for sports and decided to stick with sports. And then injury happened, and then you know, kind of fell into sales and management. So I'd been in the beauty industry managing for. Um, I would say eight years before uh, I connected with skincare and just, I fell in love with ingredients and uh, the science behind it. So I became an esthetician. And then in 2017 is when I opened my own practice. They're just, for me in my community, there wasn't anywhere that was really honoring the skin and the body the way that it should. And so I opened uh, my brand Urban Routine Wellness. And so we started as just me being solo and then transitioned into just a, sh a small facial bar. And now we're just a full embodiment of total body care. So cool. And mm -hmm. so like you said, now, now the full, full body care, but also even like soul care, correct? Yes. Yes. And when did you start to branch out into that realm? Oh gosh. Well, so this is a funny story. Um, as I've like gone through my journey, a lot of it has connected back to my childhood. But um, so when I moved to Dallas from California in 2014, uh, I ran, I was a general manager for one of Dallas's highest rated spas, and it was a holistic spa. And we had several Reiki masters um, on staff, including one of the owners. And so I was exposed to it, started getting the services uh, at that time, and then moved back to Kansas. Uh, opened my brand and I became very disconnected with my brand. I just was, it was very modern, upbeat, outgoing with a facial bar setting. It wasn't in the traditional treatment room. Uh, and so everything I learned in school with essential oils, breath work, um, I just wasn't doing anymore. So I wanted to try something different that the community, I guess, didn't have. And uh, it was with uh, a business coach. I finally hired a business coach and to help me with that disconnect. So I was going to close actually, I was just burnt out. And that's when I learned that my, my brand is a living, breathing thing that I gave birth to, and I have to treat it as its own entity. And so, um, I spent some time just listening, uh, asking questions. And that's when the brand told me, you need to be like healing people. Like you need to go back to your roots of education. And that's your touch, your breath work, your, just empowering people to be better, you know, women, moms, dads, husbands, men, you know, so uh, a light bulb went off. And that's when I started incorporating hand and arm massages, um, scalp massages again. So slowly just started to add back in that, I guess, energy piece. And that's when it just became full circle and our brand just took off. 
so cool. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And then, so at this point, you know, you're doing a lot of different types of modalities, correct? And then bringing new things into the treatment room. Um, what, what all are you offering at this point? So I really, am, um, and this is just through my studies over the last uh, couple of years when I've really tapped into um, the energetic practices, uh, I do breath work guided meditation with almost every one of my services. Um, we do, I either write my own meditations. It takes me about 30 days to write my own and record. Um, so I'll introduce those to my clients or I have like some of my favorite ones, but um, everything all of my services do include the full skincare treatment and then breath work and meditation. And then if I'm not doing a skincare treatment, I do the Reiki healing services. And then I do an inner child illumination where we go back to your childhood and we have a really playful session sometimes with your inner child. And then the, um, my training on it was soul channeling, but also uh, Acacia Records. Very cool. Okay. So we go pre- we can go pretty deep. It's yeah. it's really fun. Oh, I love that. Well, I was thinking that too, you know, even with the inner child work, um, so interesting, you being a Leo son and Leo is the divine child, you know, and being able to tap into that and kind of, kind of heal, because I know that for you, a lot of this is about the healing journey, you know, that you yourself yeah. are on. I mean, I think that's the case with so many of us is that, um, you know, you always hear like your pain is your purpose. The other day I heard your, your mess is your mission. And I love that. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like I wouldn't be super passionate about these, these things that I'm into if they hadn't actually helped me if I, and, yeah. and if I didn't need the help in the first place. So, um, you know, what, what I'm, I'm trying to remember like when, when, when we did your design, but I know that a lot of different things sort of like light bulbs came on for you, or at least that's kind of yes. like what you said to me afterward, like what have been some of the things that have, that have come up? Because I mean, it's, it's so interesting. I should say it's like as a mental projector, what Derek has going on is that um, if you were looking at his chart, you know, the, the very top, the, the mind and the crown or the head, those two top centers are colored in an Every other center below that is white. So yet again, so I was talking to my other friends doing an interview with her. Um, she, myself, and you were all two center, one channel people. And so I'm always like, these are people who have so much sensitivity, so much whiteness, um, or, you know, like it's clear, it's 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 uh, transparent, if you will. And so we take on so much of the world around us, other people, um, you know, typically very empathic. It's like, you know, you've just always been super sensitive and never really known. And you're in and just like her and I, gate 19 uh, twice in your chart, which is the gate of sensitivity, which sensitizes the whole shebang. Um, you know, so I think it's like those of us like this, it's like, no wonder we find ourselves in these roles because, you know, we know what it's like to feel very off and thrown off, probably a good portion, if not all of our lives, and then finding our way back to um like healing and wholeness, you know. So I would love to hear about any any sort of um you know, like revelations or anything that have sort of come up since then, because um, I know that it helps put a lot of, it just helps put a lot of things like it confirms or puts things in their place, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think first and foremost, I'll start with being a business owner first with this one is that, you know, I'm always looking forward and I look, I tend to look too far ahead. And so I'm mm-hmm. trying to rein that in. Um, but you know, the, the human design really, um, helped me understand what role I need to be playing in my business because I'm, I'm a trainer. That's, that, that's my like thing is I love to train and develop people and their success is so important to me. Um, but something was said to me, uh, a couple of weeks ago that clicked and it was that I need to stop accepting responsibility for everyone's careers. Yeah, And that hit home because I do, I mean, and I was just having this conversation with one of my uh, staff members today. It's like, I worry about their financials. Like I, you know, do they have enough money? Are they okay? Like, are they paying their bills? And then it's like, after that, I'm like, that's not my place. I can't take that on because 
some people are responsible with their money and some people are not. Um, and so uh, that was really one thing about the human design was it really helped me as a business owner understand what my purpose is and what I need to do moving forward. Um, and that the, the second biggest thing that came out of this was I get excited and I want to share with my team when things are going to change or I'm wanting to grow but what has happened is if they're not in the same uh, frequency, uh-huh. it really throws me off. And then I start to second guess myself. And right. then I'm like, okay, this is, yeah, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't take this risk. And so that was a boundary I created after the human design was like, you know, this brand, first of all, is my dream. I've always wanted to own my own business. Mm-hmm. My dream has always been to grow and expand and to reach more communities. And um, so after that human design is when I really was like, okay, I, while I have full respect for others' opinions about how I'm going to grow my business, it's going to grow. And, you know, with other locations coming, you know, those that are in this location now, it's not going to really affect them unless I ask them to go to that location. Like, you know, yep. so that was one thing about the human design is just really accepting my role as a business owner and owning that yeah. because I tend to think of myself as an employee when I'm not, I am the right. visionary, I am the person leading the brand. Um, so that's professionally, I would say, uh, then working into my relationship, you know, I'm a foster parent, so I do a lot with trauma. Uh, we have a lot of kids in and out of our home. Um, we have two that we've adopted, my husband and I. And, uh, you know, the, the, the caring, I can't remember, there was, um, something in the human design in particular that we covered that I was like, oh, um, and it had to do with parenting, I believe, or opening up. I don't remember off the top of my head, but ever since then, and then going back to the childhood, because I tend to take life very seriously, uh, I realized that like, I wasn't playing in my inner child. Like I wasn't doing things that I made me laugh and have fun. And so, you know, ever since then, I've made a really conscious effort to just get back to having fun playing with my kids. When I'm home, I'm home. Like my phone's off work is to the side. Like I need to be with my children and my husband. So, yeah. I love, I, 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 as soon as you said that, I'm like, I remember what it was. Cause it was kind of, it, it all kind of, and, and again, it ties together. And this is what I'm always saying about design is that there's no part of your life that it doesn't apply to. So it's interesting mm-hmm. what you just said about being, being, um, you know, aware or concerned about your employees and their financials. And I'm like, there's that, there is gate 19. That is what it's about. Mm-hmm. Is like, and it's not specifically money, but it's just that I am sensitive to overly sensitive to the needs of others, which also makes me mm-hmm. hypersensitive. And and as I was saying to my friend Ash, you know, on on that podcast, I was like, it's there's codependency in that one, and you know, like you taking on so much of the responsibility, and 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 again, having such an open chart, um, being so overly worried about everybody, you know, it's like that's right there, and so fascinating to be like, it's your north node that's its opposite. You're you're a you're a Leo sun, but also a Leo south node, and an Aquarius north node, and your Aquarius north node is in your fourth house in astrology, and so that's what that was, was like, you know, hey, home, family, all of that is the most important mm-hmm. thing to me. And that then your North node, the gate that it's in is about um, basically creating something out of nothing. It's about, you know, from, from a, an idea, a seed and just boom, expanding from there. So like you said, opening new locations and different things. It's like, I think being able to, um, I would say mine the South node for the best pieces of it is wonderful. It's like, who, of course, I want to be sensitive to, to people and the needs, their needs and things, but also I can't let that hold me back from, you know, creating new and exciting things that need to like be burst into this world. And, you know, also spending plenty of time, like when you're home, you're home, as you said, I love, yeah. I just love that. Um, that's, that's so fascinating. Well, also with the Aquarius thing too, with, with living in your North, and like you said, I've always wanted to, um, you know, be offering things to the world. It's like, that is really what you're here to do for others is, you know, an Aquarius is about the group. It's about progressiveness and moving things forward. Um, and, you know, expanding people's consciousness. 
you know, and being able to do yeah. that through this type of work is so beautiful. I think, you, as I mentioned a little bit ago, you have one channel and it's, um, you know, basically it's like, it's the one that brings in all of like the super mystical stuff, you know, um, yeah. but, 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 you know, it's like, but then, you, you know, having to be received as well for, for that. Um, and I think what you were sharing too, about, you know, telling people, you know, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to do this and, and not being received is so interesting because as a mental projector, this is a very, um, a rare, you know, sort of subtype of a projector. It's very important that you are able to talk to people. You need to be in safe environments and around safe people, people that will just like let you talk kind of at them so that you can hear what you're saying and be like, mm -hmm. yes, this is, this is spot on. So very important that you have very supportive people in your life, you know, and I know that you're somebody who's like, I'm, I'm showing up to offer support, but making sure that you're getting back, getting, getting the same back for yourself, you know, and that's how you're going to know that you're in the right places and with the right people is, is when that's all in alignment. Um, has that changed your perspective, you know, on even like work and work environment and, and everything? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, um, so we, I can't remember if I did, we did our, my human design before I went out of town for two trips, but, um, I'll share. I went to, I had a healing session done when I was in California for a few days in, uh, early March, end of February, early March. And okay. I, we weren't even talking about work. I was doing some mirror work and the, um, provider looked at the mirror and looked at me and was like, you don't feel appreciated. And I was like, what? And she was like, you don't feel appreciated. I see it when you look at yourself in the mirror that you don't feel appreciated for the things that you do for everyone around you. And I was like, oh, that had never really crossed my mind. Um, but when she said that, I felt it. And I was like, yeah, like I don't, you know, I don't expect thank yous. I don't expect, you know, people to like ask me how I'm doing, but then it clicked that it's like, you should, I mean, you should be asking your boss, whether whatever industry you're in, like check in on your boss, check in on your managers, because we do have a lot going on. And, you know, like you said to me, being a mental projector is I'm always so worried about their careers and how they're doing. Are they growing? Are they happy? Um, and, you know, I shared that with my team. I came back and I had a meeting and I was like, look, this came out that like, I don't feel appreciated. And I want you all to know that. So you can be aware of it is that yeah. I also need some tenderness, some love, some support, um, because I carry the weight of everything here. Um, yeah. And I think that gets overlooked sometimes when you are an employee, because I've been guilty of that when I worked for owners and stuff before is I just, I do the day to day, you know, I don't see financials, profit and loss, anything. So I don't really care. I didn't, I mean, I did care, but not to the extent now of like owning my business and seeing all yeah. Of that. Yeah. So. It, it, because at the end of the day, it's like everybody's still like a person, and you know, regardless mm -hmm. if they're the boss or or what have you, it's like they've got they've got their whole own life um, to worry about. And yeah, I mean, what what a great point too. And and I think too, on your end as as well, being a projector, it's like you know your role is is to be the wise and insightful guide. It's like you're the person that mm -hmm. sees and knows where people. Um, you know, it basically says like how to direct them, how to direct them to like, you know, do their life even better. Um, and you see all the things. And so it can be hard, you know, where you're like, God, I'm, I'm giving so much insight and so much wisdom and not necessarily even getting some of that back for myself, you know? Um, yeah. So I can, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it's also hard to, um, I've talked to several business owners about that, about this is that, you know, I'll use like the girl gang, um, as an example, uh, is that, you know, I employ 98% women, yeah. um, very strong, amazing, talented women. And, you know, my brand gets overlooked and doesn't get the appreciation that I feel like it deserves because it's owned by a male. Yeah. and being a male business owner, being a projector, trying to push people to their boundaries and limits to be better and do better and just be successful overall, you know, that does get taken in a different direction of, 
oh, he's not trying to, you know, instead of, oh, he's trying to help me, it's, you know, you are being rude or you're being disrespectful. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's everyone's interpretation. So that has been something I've had to learn through this journey is um, how I'm projecting that because in, you know, in my head, I'm coming from a loving space, but I'm also very black and white. I don't like, I don't like the sugar coat. I like to just say it like it is, and then we'll get through it. We're adults. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because I don't think sugar coating or trying to like make it easy really helps anybody because mm-hmm. it can be easy now, but it's going to be hard soon. I mean, it's going to come up. So, yeah. yeah I mean, what a great point too, you know, um, I'm like, oh, I want to look, I'm like, I got to look at something on your chart. <laughs> um, it's always, yeah, just fascinating stuff. Um, and with that, you know, too, I think, I think with a projector, um, the aura is focused and it's penetrating and it can feel, um, having been on the receiving end, you know, of different people where you're like, what you just said, it's like, it's not meant rude. It's not meant anything. It's, it's coming from a place of love and it can yet feel like, Oh, you know, you see me like, this is an attack almost because it's like, I didn't invite you to like, kind of come into my Mm -hmm. space and say that. Right. And, and to understand that this person is is coming from a really good place, um, that they're like, Mm -hmm. you said, I'm doing this from love because I want you to be, I want you to be successful. Like you work yeah. for me. Therefore, like your success is my success. Right. Yeah. And and they kind of have that that open awareness um from others, you know. I think that's God, that's gotta be, that's just gotta be so potentially difficult. You know, I've n- I've never been in that position before. Um, but yeah, oh gosh, I can only it's like, scary because I mean. It just, you know, the right kind of person can spin that and send you into a tailspin. And I've been there. 2021 was a very hard year for me where, um, you know, this pandemic, of course, I don't want to get too deep into that one. But, you know, it's like being a business owner and navigating a pandemic, like, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, And so then I feel like my projection amplified because I was trying to keep the doors open, you know, keep clients coming in, really just be a support for the whole community to try to take their mind off all the awful things happening in the world. Um, And so, you know, 2021 was a very hard year for me where that was taken um, in a different direction and I shut down, I closed off and made a lot of changes in my life, but I really put up my walls. Yeah. Um, and I'm just now getting to where I can start trusting and letting people in. Um, and that's been hard because I have staff that's been with me for almost five years now. And so where I am now versus where I was then is totally different. And some of them don't know me now. I mean, I don't feel like a lot of my staff really know me because I only let them in when I'm at work. Um, And so then you have this comparison of, well, this is how we remember you. So we're just going to assume that's how you are. Um, But then how it's, how I am at work. I don't know. This is hard to explain, but um, you know, it's almost like you get projected on like a hundred percent. You don't, they, you know, it's like, you don't deserve to change. Like, you, and nobody needs to know all the change you're going through it. I mean, you celebrate it in yourself. Like, I don't feel like I need to tell everyone everything that I'm going through and the, the change and the healing and the growth that I've done. I hope that it comes through in my actions and, you know, the things I'm doing, but um, that's also hard when you're a business owner and have so much responsibility as, you know, protecting, protecting your own growth. Um, oh, how, how, I mean, and of course, you know, I'm because, thinking of you know, your chart. Yeah. Yeah. You have <laughs> no, just with the undefined G center of like, you know, changing. And, and I think we talked about that as like the acceptance of it's like, you're going to, you're going to show up and be a different person and having permission yeah. to like w- one for yourself to do that. And two, for other people mm-hmm. to understand that it's like, that is one of the the things it's like an undefined G center is going to 
of course, take on and amplify like different people and things that they're around. And that's beautiful if they're, if they're actually allowed to change and flow with, with, you know, what's happening in their life. And then on top of it, your son is in gate 33, which is happens to be my North node, but it's like, that's the gate that's about privacy and retreat. And that is about, I know we would have talked about that. It's about turning that into a strength. And so I always see it for myself too, because I'm a very private person. Um, You know, I'm like very friendly and everything, but like people, you know, unless you know me, you don't really know me, you know? Um, And I think that's something that I don't want to give up. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I think, I think if you have 33, you're going to understand this, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. no, this is, I, um, you know, I, I pull and, I, and I've been personally, I've been in a, in a phase like this, but you were just saying how like certain t- time periods will be difficult. The last few months I've been very like off Instagram. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like people probably wouldn't know. I'm like, despite posting, I'm like, I'm not on it. I'm not using it, I'm not looking at things. I'm like, go on to mm-hmm. promote, say, say, you know, the podcast or something, but that's it. Um, because it's like, I feel like there's times where I go through and like, I have to pull back and it's like fortifying yourself and, and healing and strengthening and kind of like regaining your strength so that you can come back, you can reemerge. And you're sort of like, wow, I've, I've, I've up leveled. I'm feeling, and I'm starting, I feel it now. I'm like, I realize it's cycles. I'm going yeah. through it. I'm coming back out of one, um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a, I always say like a depressive episode, you know? Um, and then you're like, okay, no, actually I'm, I'm, I'm better. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a better version of myself this time. And like you said, not everybody kind of gets it, Um, Yeah, you know, and, and wanting to be around people that are very supportive that do get it. You know, you're also a line four, like me, Um, I'm a four, one, you're a two, four. And and it's like Mm -hmm. four, fours need, they need a supportive network point blank. And you yeah. know when you have it and you know when you don't. And you can be around. And I'm always like, it can be people. They're, they can be just fine people. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're not your people. Yeah. And then when you, you, know, you, you know the difference, you're like, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down at some point, the, the fours are the most influential of all the, all the profile numbers. So if a four isn't getting that sort of like, yes, you're, you, you know, like a four is lighting somebody else on fire, getting them excited about what they're excited about. You're like, if, if that's not happening, this is never going to work. Like eventually the yeah. four is going to be like, peace, I got to go find different people. Then, you know, and I've, I've certainly done, definitely done that. And, you know, in the last year, it was like, not with my people, not with people that understood me at all. And now I am, you know, and that's such a huge, that's a, that's a complete life shift, you know, like yeah. what's been, what's been your experience with that, especially, especially more recently, since this has become more of the forefront for you, you know, the healing stuff. Yeah. Um, so, um, so 2020 is when I really started my attunements and really taking care of myself mentally and tapping into past trauma child really. Cause I'd never thought that was a problem for me. Then I started, my husband and I started marriage there or um, sex therapy together. And that's when I started to learn about attachments. And, um, you know, we, we lost, I won't, I don't, I guess I won't say lose. Um, I don't like to use the word, the term lost for friends and people that have been in my life before, because I think it's more of a growing. So, um, you know, our support group had grown in different directions and that support group had been very, had been very big for me. Um, and then you know, kids, politics, business, pandemic hit and life just totally changed. So for two years, I haven't had a support network and that's been something that I've struggled with. But uh, now I will say that I have a very small, very strong support group that is very uh, it's easy to navigate. Like I can express my concerns, my feelings, my thoughts. Um, the communication is very strong and I finally am like heard before I needed, I was the extrovert. I was the one that was like, Oh, I'd meet this person. They join our friend group. I'd meet this person. They join our friend group. Um, that was just kind of my role in this social circle. And, you know, I, when I turned inwards and really focused on myself, you know, it's like, I did change. I don't like big crowds. I'm not, I'm not really 
in that zone of like going to random people to tr- to make friends with them. Um, it's really weird how it's all changed. Um, yeah. But like you said, that support is so important. And I was feeling so alone for a long time um, because I was used to having friends that I could call and be like, Hey, like, let's hang out. Let's do this. Um, but I have my children and I have my husband and, um, you know, that's been, that's been really great. Our family. So I've had people to talk to and it's grown, you know, the last two months I've really let down my walls and let people in and, um, and regaining trust. And so I do have, um, a few individuals that, uh, I can really lean on now, but, you know, I think that's to, that's really to be expected even outside of, you know, just having this particular profile that you mentioned. Um, I've watched my staff as they go through their energetic alignments is there's always that shedding cycle. And I tell them, prepare, like, get ready. It's coming. Like you will go through a shed cycle where your life will be turned upside down only for you to realize when you turn it right side up, it's going to be exactly how it should be. So that's my long answer to support. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, and even even looking at your chart from the astrological perspective, you know, you're a Scorpio rising and Pluto is, you have Pluto rising, meaning like that's the first planet you encounter in your astrology chart. And I'm like, Pluto is deep personal transformation. It is, it is, I'm always like, Pluto is like, burn it down to the ground. There's no like, yeah. there's no band-aids. There's no patching this thing up. We're burning the whole thing down to the ground to then completely rebuild it. You know, the Phoenix rises from the ashes. And it's so mm-hmm. cool from an astrological perspective, like that, that is something I know, like pair that with your North node of like creating something from nothing. I'm like, you're kind of a person that in a way is like, you know, I was mentioning your, before we got on your cross, you know, your incarnation cross. It's like, you're somebody who, um, yeah, people encounter and there's going to be these pivots and stuff. It's like, that's what you bring to the, you know, like the energetically you bring to, to people's lives and their conversation is just like, you know, like complete and utter transformation. And how cool yeah. is that? You know, um, and I think to have to go through it yourself, number one, so that then you can turn around and offer that to other people is really amazing and really magical. You know, I think sometimes we wonder, I mean, I certainly have, um, you know, yet again, we're both, you have gate 36. That's my son gate. It's like, that's that one that's about, you know, going through a lot of emotional stuff. And you're like, oh my God, like, why, why me for the longest time? And then it's like, oh, oh, it's because I'm supposed to be somebody that like has walked through. I was like, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, like you have to go through the BS (laughs) to come out, hopefully come out the other side and understand that it's like, it's all temporary, that it's all, it's all that it's like, it's going to be so much better. We just got to, we just have to persevere and make it through. And, you know, it's going to be a beautiful thing. But um, I think a lot of people are, are afraid of all of that. You know, Mm -hmm. and I mean, and for, and I think for good reason, but how do you, how do you think about that too? You know, with that, I'm just like, I would laugh because like I said, when I saw like the Pluto and Pluto rising, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, (laughs) Derek is is an agent of change, you know, like you just swoop into people's lives and like bring that with you, you know, has that been, has that really kind of, to me, that seems like the role that you're like taking on. Has that, do you feel like that that's what you're adopting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there was something that my therapist said two weeks ago that was really funny. As I told him, I was like, you know, I feel like I've been drugged through the coals of hell the last year of my life. Um, truly, there were days when it's like I couldn't get out of bed. I was just so beat up yeah. and there was no one to share that with. I mean, my husband was there and he was supportive, um, but there was no one else that really I could talk to or share that with. Um, and my therapist said, well, the great thing is that you got through it. You know what it's like. So if you end up there again, you know, you'll get through it again. Um, and so then it flipped a switch. Um, you know, I, I teach my clients, like we have a lot of switches in our bodies uh, that we subconsciously will turn on and off. Um, and so, um, you know, that was a switch that flipped on for me was that like, take risks, you know, open up, be vulnerable because, the worst thing that could happen is you do get drugged through the coals again. 
but you've been there before and you've gone through it. Um, now opening up to people, that's, that's pretty new for me. Uh, I really didn't start offering my healing services, um, or energetic services. Um, I kind of shared with you my take on healing lately. Um, but as far as my energetic services, uh, really as of late really took off. It was just, it was almost like in March I stepped in, uh, I would say April in April, there was a switch that flipped for me. And I had this long conversation with my husband about how I was feeling, how just vibrational, like, I don't even know the word. There's no word to explain the feeling. And then it was like, boom, it was like, I shot off a signal (laughs) and I had 12 new energy clients within three weeks which is a wow, lot. Yeah. I mean, they were, my phone was going off. I was booking, I was getting messages, I was getting emails, you know, um, and it just was incredible. Um, and I'm glad I took all the time that I did before starting to work on clients because I feel like it made me so much stronger, yeah. but I do love to challenge my clients to think a little differently and to dive into, because, you know, I, I think you can start, you can start a new life or you can change um, at any time. I think some people, well, I won't say some people, I think, you know, society kind of tells us that, you know, by a certain age, we're just doing like, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I just think that's such crap. Like, you know, uh, again, we talked about this before the podcast is like, you could, you can have enlightenment overnight. Like you could have the craziest dream. That's so real. And I learned about our, you know, our loved ones who have passed away coming Mm -hmm. back into our dreams and healing us, um, and recognizing that. And it's like, that was, that was a moment for me when I was like, okay, you know, my grandmother's coming back. She's healing me. I'm seeing her. My therapist was like, this is what it is. And that was an overnight enlightenment for me. And that's when, you know, change doesn't necessarily happen overnight. Putting the foot forward towards change and recognizing the enlightenment is, it can happen overnight. Absolutely. And then we get to choose, you know, do we keep it for ourselves and just work on ourselves for the rest of our life? Or do we decide to be vulnerable AF, (laughs) capital AF, exclamation point, underline, (laughs) and present it to the world and say, I and stepping into this new consciousness. And, you know, it's not about being a healer. It's, we talked about this being a vessel, eyes, ears, heart, brain. We're seeing, we're feeling, we're getting these, you know, these messages through. And that's scary because, you know, you're like, am I crazy? Like, (laughs) am I losing my mind? Like, uh, it's just like, the things that come through once you just listen. And that's what I teach my clients is I'm like, just listen. Like you have to listen into everything around you because it's speaking, but we, we've been taught to just hear what we want to hear. Yeah. Um, So yeah, when you talk about um, working with others, it's just, I want to open them up. I want to crack them open and just let them see what they're capable of. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, you know, you you know, kind of to keep going on this whole Pluto thing, you know, as you're saying that and just like the, the you know, to me, I'm like, okay, we're talking about like basically like, boom, spontaneous, almost like a Kundalini awakening, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but even showing up as like that different, it's like that your, your Pluto is in gate one and that is about everything being constantly new and different and fresh. And it's like with the undefined G center, I'm like, yes, go crazy with that because it's like, there's always going to be new things showing up yeah. um, and new ways that you want to want to be and express yourself. And then on top of it, you know, saying you mentioned specifically like having a dream and I'm like, you know, you have the channel of awareness. It's like, this is the one where it's like, it's the channel for mystery. It's, it's the people that love to like, you know, I have, I have half of it where it's like, yep. Gate 61. I'm like, just out here loving the mystery, the cult side of life, you know, like it just all the time. Um, 
and and being that person that kind of brings that awareness to others, but you have, um, as your primary cognition, you have inner vision. So it's being that person that is able to go inside and really see things, you know, it's not about mm-hmm. like in yoga, they call it pratyahara. Like you're like withdrawing your senses to go inside of yourself. Um, again, pairing beautifully with gate 33 of like, you know, just that inner retreat, you go in and you strengthen and you see things. And it's like, that's where the magic happens for you. And then, then to come out mm-hmm. with that. And again, it's like the way you show up, it's like, and one of the coolest things I think about design is like, we're, you're wired that way. You're, you're, you're programmed to bring that to other people. So like you said, it's like, I could keep it to myself. And I've always, I've always kind of thought the same thing of like, well, I'm hiding, you know, like for the longest people, time, people didn't know these things probably about me. And it's like, but this has always been me. And now getting to, you know, like jokingly come out of the closet with it and be like, yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm, this what I'm here to do in this world. You know, how, how has that been for you as well to like, do you feel, I mean, clearly you feel received. It's like people are, people are into what you're doing, you know, but did that feel weird? Was that hard to go from like, I'm an esthetician to like, yeah, I'm an esthetician, but I'm, I'm a healer. Uh, yes, it was very hard. Um, only because, <clears throat> you know, I, again, was so focused on like just modern, upbeat sort of environment. And then I, I realized that healing and energy work is for every age. Um, and for and so everybody. long <laughs> and, and everybody. And I, yeah. you know, I, I had someone make a comment one time that was like, Oh, I didn't realize like younger people were into this. Like I just, every, the people that I see doing it are just, you know, they're older, you know, more mature. And I'm like, well, it's, it is for everyone. And so, um, I feel like my brand has done a really amazing job of pushing us inside to expand that out into the community to show that like, you know, you can be religious. And st- I mean, and I explain to people, cause I do have clients that are very religious and I explain to them, you know, when you pray, that's energy work. Absolutely. That is energy work. And so you're already practicing energy work. Um, and I'm just, I'm helping you. I'm helping support you with the energy work that I do. And so that's really been able to break that barrier of, you know, energy work being witchcraft or devil or whatever, um, that we get labeled sometimes, but, uh, it was, it was a very hard thing because, you know, how do you blend the two? Um, but once, once we figured out how to blend the two, it was just, I can remember the first session that I, um, when I was still out at the facial, while I'm in a treatment room now. Um, because I do sound bowls and stuff, but, um, I was out at the facial bar and we had, I had purchased Bluetooth headphones and, uh, I did a guided meditation for the client and I was standing above her and I witnessed her whole body just relax. And I got done and she said, wow, I don't know what you did, but that was amazing. And from that moment on, my whole mindset shifted that really it's like, I, it's not all about the skin. It's about the soul. And if your inside is healthy and you're talking to yourself healthy and you're taking care of yourself, your skin's going to be great. And I tell my clients, you know, you can go buy the most expensive skincare product on my shelf, on any shelf, but if you're inside and I'm not just talking like diet and nutrition, I'm talking about your actual soul. If it's not healthy, this product is not going to work. So there's, there is energy in everything that we do. And so um, it was hard, but it has been the best thing that I've done for myself and for my clients. They just, they feel it, they love it. Um, And then I started tapping into just Reiki services. And that's when a whole new wave of healing just unleashed, you know, the visions coming through and, and, you know, I'm in the Midwest. And so clients are always a little nervous coming in for them. They don't know what to expect. And, you know, I will be, I'll bring something up and they're like, how do you know that? Or, and I'm like, it's just, it's what comes through. Like if I see it, I speak it. And, um, I tend to have a lot more, uh, clients that I'm working through with relationships. And 
you know, we have to tread the lines of not being a therapist, but also providing healthy ways of helping them outside of the treatment room. And I love it so much. Um, it has brought so much joy to my life to have clients trust me, but reach out to me and tell me how much better they feel. You know, I had one client a few weeks ago that did her first session and she texted me and she's like, I stepped outside and she's like, I could just, it was brighter. I, I heard the birds again. Um, oh. And I, it's just the little things like that. You know, my children, they love meditation. Mm -hmm. um, every night before bed, they listen to their meditation music or they'll ask to listen to one of my guided meditations. Um, and watching children heal from trauma through energy work and meditation has also been life-changing because, you know, the system tries to just force medication in them. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm trying not to cry because I think of my boys oh, and, yeah. you know, now, now we have, um, we have, uh, three other kids that we're very attached to that, you know, it, it's, it becomes a safety for them. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing that I wish every, I mean, I wish everybody could have and everybody has it. It's just understanding that it is for everyone and. Well, I love, I love that you bring up like with the kids, you know, because it's like, I'm a mom and, you know, implementing all of these things like at home, it's, you know, it, raising my kids according to their design and, and just having like tools and different things. And the stuff that we talk about, we laugh because, you know, it's like my daughter's old enough to understand, you know, like my, my little guy still he's not there, but, um, you know, that you're like, Oh, the things that we're into in our house are probably not the same things that other, you know, like your friends or, or whoever, and, and not in a bad way, but just that, you know, she's very into Harry Potter. So we're like, we're magic people. We're not muggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but, to, but, to, but to raise your kids in a, in a very like magical, I, I say magical, but really it's like, you're just giving them the tools. You're giving them the tools yeah. to like, be the best versions of themselves. And I think personally, I'm like such a, such a, you know, so passionate about this because they, you know, children, Whitney Houston, children are our future. Like it's like, they yeah. are our future. So don't you want to put the, the most and the best into your children so that we have hope for the future? Because yeah. I don't want to see people, um, you know, hung up on different things. It's, it goes back to what you said about, you know, like if, if the soul isn't right, like exactly. So why would I want my say daughter to constantly be absorbing all of these sort of like negative things about being a girl and you're no, you're not this, you're not that you're not pretty, you know, like it's always like you're, you're never mm -hmm. enough and grow up thinking the things that I've thought and like, Oh yeah. no, the buck stops here. We're going to make sure that you are empowered. And it's so sweet because I'm always just like, trying to fill her full of like so many positive things. And, you know, she'll say, and almost sometimes it'll catch me off guard. She'll just, be, she'll say something almost like, you know, even nice kind of like things that I've said to her about herself. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's not I'm like, ego. Own That's, that, girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you just, when you see it in children, you're like, this is, this is what I wish I would have um, sort of grown up feeling like. And, and again, like I said, we will be living in a completely different world if our kids are empowered and actually love themselves. And it's like, I want to be an example and a representation for my own children in that realm. Yes. Just like, I'm sure you, you know, you're like, I, yeah. otherwise you, there is no hope. It's like, you have to start mm -hmm. with yourself so that therefore, you know, like they have something they can see and, and model, you know, and understand that this is yeah. the way that we do it. And we don't, we don't talk shit about ourselves and we, you know, we're not, we're yeah. just not doing that. It's like, I think, I think that's everything, you know? Yeah. That's you have everything. to love yourself first. And, and I think that's something that, um, I know we've talked about before, but I share with my clients all the time is I'm like, you have to love yourself, you know? loving yourself mm -hmm. is not selfish at all. And you, I, I just feel like society, it's like, we have to love all these other things and materials and just yeah. crap. And I'm like, no, you have to love yourself. And even in my marriage, you know, that's something that we both 
really focused on was loving ourselves because the, the more and the harder that we love ourselves, the harder we're going to love each other and, and see each other, hear each other. Um, and we do, and he's very open. Um, of course, you know, it was very vulnerable to open up to this with him and he's gotten used to me now. Uh, I do some, I do cellular hypnotherapy, um, every other week at night before bed and I'll wake up out of my like session sometimes. And I'll be like, I'll put my hand on him. And it, just like the other night I reached over and put my hand on him and I saw just like a vision came through and I was like, did you ever get lost in a parking garage as a kid? And he's like, what? <laughs> and then I told him the vision that came through. And so he's gotten used to it now, but at first it was kind of weird because, you know, things started to connect. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, but you're, you're spot on with children. I mean, they're our future. And, and I think the more that we can raise their vibration, just the better that we're going to be. I mean, I want to live in a safe space when I'm older and my kids are going to create that for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mine love the sound bowls, love the meditation cards, yeah. the mm -hmm. essential oils, the sage. They love to collect all of our crystals for, you know, full moons to get them outside. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's, it's amazing. Oh, I love that. It's just so, <laughs> so sweet. And oh uh, yeah, they're my, my, my kids are just my absolute obsession. And <laughs> it's just like, Oh, I just love you so much. I want you to always love me and be around. And you know what I mean? And I think that's it. I, I say that to people. I'm like, you have to foster that relationship with them from the time they're little so that they are, they, they do want to be there, you know, with you and helping to take care of you when, when the, the shoes on the other foot, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to invest I'm going to invest so much of myself into you um, and not in a over, you know, like a, in a weird way, but just in a, like, I, it's all love. It's like, I, I want to make sure that, you know, above and beyond anything else that yeah. you are so loved and you are, we care so much about you and um, you know, that you're protected and all those things that, you know, a lot of people as adults, it's like, you know, why they're so jaded or you know feel messed up or whatever it's like because that they didn't have that you know and i'm like yeah. man I, my mission is to like if i did nothing else in my life is just to be the best mom i possibly can and to like send two two sweet little people into the world that are actually going to help make it a significantly better place you know yeah yeah well i'd love that um sorry were you going to say something <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, you, you know, and for me, um, you know, being in foster care is, you know, kids bounce all the time and they collect energy with them and it yeah. wears down on them. And so I, that is one thing that I've, I, I love that I'm able to do is I'm able to really help them relax. Um, you know, usually their first night with me, we do some grounding exercises and I try to clear, clear anything that they've been through because, um, I actually made myself really sick one time because I was trying to work on uh, three kids at one time uh, mm -hmm. early on in my practice before I knew that was not a good idea. Um, and they were very clouded and I was very confused as to why I was like, why can I not get through? Mm -hmm. And it's because of the trauma, especially when you have um, sexual abuse involved, they are very clouded and it takes a lot to break through and build trust with their souls. Like, yeah. You're not building trust with the child. You're building trust with their, their soul and their aura. And, um, so, and that's, it's amazing once you can make that breakthrough and see the difference it makes in them. Um, you just see just so much shut off of them. Uh, so that is something that I would like to see more of in the world is more energy work being uh, invested into our foster care system. Absolutely. Wow. Versus medication. Yeah, right. Meditation over medication. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. But what, how I love cool. That. How cool, you know, you as, you know, a dad and a foster parent, you know, instilling that, especially in children, like you said, you know, that they're that they're bouncing around and they're collecting, you know, experiences and you know that all of them are not going to be wonderful, but that you're actually mm -hmm. you're you're giving them a tool that's a lifetime tool. That's something yeah. that they can take with them. And that, that, um, yeah, like the, the nervous system regulation and the grounding and all those things. I'm like, I love it. Cause this stuff, this is why I laugh too. You know, where you're like, as you said earlier, you can buy the most expensive product. I'm like, girl, you can take your shoes off and go stand on the bare ground 
for free. Mm -hmm. You can go take a walk outside. You can commune with nature. You can lay down in the grass. You can close your eyes. You can meditate. You can, the the most important things in life are free, you know, like it's, it's, it's like the healing, the healing's there for the asking. Um, It's available to us. You know, it's like, you just have to actually do the thing. And I think a lot of times people um, would rather, would rather, you know, okay, well, I'll just take a pill for that. And it's like, and and no, and I'm by no means, uh, you know, like downing medication because it's necessary. Sometimes I've spent plenty of my life on it and stuff, but it's like, Mm -hmm. but there are many, many, many other tools that we can turn to um, that you can use in tandem or, you know, yeah. like for me, it was eventually I got off of medication because I'm like, I have a lot of ways to like, I thought I was always going to be on it. It's like, no, I have a lot of ways mm-hmm. to like really help heal myself. Um, and, and it's, and it's out there, it's out there and it's, it's available to us. And I think, yeah, I mean, that's that good. That's an even bigger conversation, like with our healthcare system and stuff, you know, but it's like, man, it's, because mm-hmm. it's easier to do that than like to take the time and really, and I think the intention and the care that it takes to go into like doing these things is a lot more um, than just, you know, going to the pharmacy. Yeah. yeah just, well, and it goes back to, you know, just surrendering. I think so many people think surrendering is giving up and it's actually quite oh. opposite. It's, you know, so I, I, you know, I have a whole meditation on this that came to me one night where we just, it was all about surrender. That's like, you're not failing. You're not giving up. You're not, you're just making room for something better. Yeah. So. And I mean, I love that too, because it's like, it's actually in a, in a weird way, one of the best feelings where you're just like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the fight, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm willing to just like, I mean, because I believe in, I always, I always, my, my word for it is the divine, but it's like, I believe in something, you know, it's like God, the universe, the divine, whatever you want to call it. It's like, I'm not in charge. And anytime you're pretending like you are, you're just deluding yourself, but, but just to like, give it over, you're like, whatever is meant to be, will be in like this, this things will make sense and then things will be okay. And, and again, like you said, to teach, to teach children that early on, is such a beautiful thing because that, like I said, it's a life lesson that takes people their entire lifetime to learn. So if you can learn that the earlier, the better, you know, um, it's so good. Well, that kind of, that kind of, um, cause you, you'd mentioned like, you know, their favorite oils and crystals and stuff. So I was like, Oh, I want to ask you some like beauty related questions. Um, yeah. well, like where, well, one thing is, you know, I mean, obviously like I kind of like to 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 dig at this, but it's like, you know, what's your biggest beef with the beauty industry in general? And like, where do you oh. see it go? <laughs> oh, no. Heavy sigh. Heavy you sigh. unleash the floodgates. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I mean, I, I think when, when those of us, especially when you come from it and you're like, hey, insider, you get it, you see it. And you're like, I got... I got a bone to pick, you know? Um, and yeah. And like, where where do you see it going? ultimately I got, a lot of, I got a lot of bones to pick um <laughs> you know sadly like i'll say this in a very polite way that our industry is dying um so i yeah. i just started working with my business coach because i did um i did a reading with ryan um that is your i guess yes, co-worker ryan Hagen. Um, yeah uh-huh. ryan yeah so ryan did um a reading for me a few months ago and um you know, he had talked about my business coach came up and this, this leads into the beauty industry. So I promised this as a point oh God, um, no, go for it. and he was like, you know, you're working with a female and your, your work is not done yet. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I went back to my business coach and I was like, Hey, you know, I had a reading. Um, and you know, one of the things that came out was that, you know, I'm working with a female for my business, but she was the only one. And I was like, you know, we're not quite finished. And that's when she, opened up and was like, you know, I've been creating and birthing this higher self beauty activation. Mm -hmm. And, um, once I was introduced to it, I was just like, wow, like, holy cow. And it tied in with my, you know, my new perception on skincare that it's like ingredients are important. You know, of course, facials are important, uh, but inner work is the most important. Um, and (laughs) so what I'm finding is, is that, you know, it's trending now Reiki's trending. Yeah, everyone wants to be a Reiki practitioner. And that's where I was saying earlier is that I personally am trying to get away from being defined as a healer, because really, it's, yeah, I, again, we're just, we're the vessels, we're the eyes seeing, we're the, we're the ears listening, we're the brain, you know, 
transferring it, we're letting it all flood and we're opening up our bodies to the person on our table. Um, we're not using our own actual energy. So I think to call myself a healer um, isn't there uh, yeah. just for that reason, but, you know, yeah. to each their own. But, you know, the problem with the industry is we're in a hustle culture. And, you know, I, I am excited to see that I think the, um, the what do they call them? I don't want to say trendy people, uh, influencers. I think the influencer culture is going to die out over the next year, year and a half. I agree. Um, I think I think they did a good job of bringing more awareness to it. But I think that with the lack of education and again, you've got to remember there's money at the back end of it. And, you know, we've just we've hit this culture where it's like people don't want to work full time anymore because there's opportunities to just post on social media, like share this amazing product that actually is junk but they're getting some sort of kickback from it i mean yeah. i'm sure you've seen people post and they'll oh, list Lord, all, yes. all of the money they make from just social media um and it's draining them and they'll and I, I promise you when you look at influencers from a year ago they're not doing it anymore they get burnt out mm-hmm. um but this hustle culture has got to stop um and it's it has to be about quality but what i'm finding is that Um, you know, it's just like with crystals, people are, you know, using crystals in the treatment room and posting pretty pictures because it looks good. And I'm seeing these crystals placed on these clients that I'm like, that doesn't belong there. And again, crystals hold energy and you could throw someone off so fast and disrupt their nervous system by placing a crystal in the wrong place. Um, and so I, I like social media for the aspect that I get to market my business and uh, can share myself on there. But I also think social media is BS. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think the industry relies too much on it. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. and then everyone's a coach now. Everyone is a coach after the, I don't know what happened in the pandemic, but suddenly everyone is a coach. Everyone's a trainer. (laughs) I mean, there was, I actually, so I just opened back up my business coaching because I did have a, a coaching and then I closed it for a while and I just opened it back up. So I've been doing some one-on-ones and uh, there was a girl that she said, she was like, yeah, she's like, I'm in this group. And this girl the day before was like, I'm closing my business. I'm done. And then the next day was like, oh, I'm offering coaching sessions. And it, she was like, yeah, that's, that's just what we see. But, and I told her, I was like, well, in all transparency, there's been times where I've been like, I'm going to close. Like, I just am tired. Like I, yeah. I miss, you know, sometimes being solo, but yeah, overall, I think the biggest struggles with the industry is just the, um, authenticity isn't the word. Um, I think that we are being blinded by bright and shiny objects. Mm-hmm. Companies that can afford it are just buying stuff and putting their label on it and selling it to us for way too much. Um, and the education itself is very lacking. I do think our license should be an associate's degree. Yeah. Um, because when you understand the skin, I mean, you have to be really good at science to be a good esthetician. You just do. I agree. Yeah. Um, you have to. And you know, I, I sit in these groups and I watch all this stuff and I'm just, sometimes it like, it horrifies me that, you know, some people are working on clients and they don't know the basic foundations, but again, it goes back to the schools. Um, and I would love to push for an associate's degree in our industry, but, um, so yeah, that would be, that's a few of the bones. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's funny that you, but you're saying to you about like things being trendy and, and, you know, needing to be like a good esthetician in the first place. Uh, in the last couple of years, I had, you know, made a stop and um, between going from derm to plastics, cause I'd always been like very hardcore medical with my personal life, always being about this stuff. Right. I joke. I'm like, I'm a Pisces. You know, it's like, of course, I've always been, <laughs> always been that person. Um, and then was doing for a little while, like, you know, bringing, bringing the two sides of things together. And there was a, a promotional video made of me and it's a really beautiful video, you know, but it's like, I mean, it's a couple years ago, but, um, I'm playing the, the singing bulls. I'm using tuning forks. I have crystal, you know, like doing all of this stuff. And it's like at the early stages of people and then jumping on that bandwagon. And I remember after it got posted, 
people freaking out about it. It's actually, Josh is always like, that's the video that made me be like, I want you. And little did we know everything was going to transpire the way that it did. But he was like, Mm -hmm. oh, that video, I was just obsessed with it. Um, But I had people messaging me, DMing me, basically being like, kind of like, where can I buy a kit to do what you do? And I'm like, I've been an esthetician, a, a master medical esthetician in Washington since 2003. And I was like, at the time, let me see. I'm 41 now, but you know, it's a couple years ago. And I'm like, um, I've done multiple different types of healing trainings, Reiki master. Mm -hmm. Um, I did my Kundalini yoga teacher training. I'm like, do you have a spare? How many years? It's like this, what you're seeing, what you're seeing. And you're like, Ooh, I want to do this. It's like, this is somebody's life. And you're just seeing, you know, what you think, I waltzed in and, and just started like doing, and it's like, and, and my astrology background and my human design, it's like all of this stuff. That's like my life's work, what I devote myself to. And you want to hop on. And I did have people do that. It was, I really weirded out, weirded out by copying things that I had like made like a particular eye mask yeah. or doing, replicating photos that I had, you know, like things that I was putting out. And I was like, this is bizarre. This is really weird. Yeah. To, to see stuff that you're doing being emulated in that way where you're like, I'm just showing up being authentic, just doing me. And, and like you said, seeing, seeing things even now where I'm like, oh my God, like different crystals and things where I'm like, what are these people doing? Where do they get this information? Yeah. You know, or I was just talking, talking to my friend again the other day. And I was like, I saw somebody is like, was selenite, which is a, a crystal that you're not meant to get wet because it's salt based. It will dissolve eventually. And they were using yeah. it on all directly on people's skin. And I was like, really like grossed out. Cause I'm like, that's not sanitary. One, it's like, you can't clean it correctly. Number two, um, if you're, if you're not, and you're putting it on different people, it's like, that's cross contamination. I'm like, you kind of have to honor both the science yeah. and the spiritual sides of things. You know, like you said, you need, you need mm-hmm. to understand all of it. And it's just funny. It's like different, different things people are talking about. And I'm, I'm laughing lately because, um, you know, I'm like, you're over here talking out of one side of your mouth of like, you know, posting things about, you know, I don't do celebrity culture, any of that, but you're posting Ugh. about that. And right. And, and, you know, like what this person has done, but also like love and light. And I'm like, I, you know, people have, you can evolve, but it, but it's so, it's so kind of ass backwards, like watching some of this stuff of these people suddenly, like you can tell this isn't authentic. This is, this is them seeing that this is like, Oh, maybe this is the direction the industry is going. And it's like, I've been this person who's like, I'm all about injections 24 seven. And now I'm going to start talking about this. And yeah. I don't know, just, it's just for, for, for those of us that it's like, you know, not, not that you you own anything or it's exclusive or, or whatever, like, you know, pe- like we said, people can spontaneously just sort of like wake up. But you're like, that's a little weird. And it's a little off. It doesn't seem like mm-hmm. it's real. And, and, Furthermore, I I feel like myself, like I love the oils. I love it. And in fact, that's the stuff I want to talk to you about and ask you your favorites next. Mm -hmm. But um, when people only rely on that, you're like, makes a pretty picture. Absolutely. Makes a pretty picture. You know what? Like I said earlier, I could go outside with my bare feet and then nothing and meditate. And Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that is that is truly like more my spiritual practice. It's like, yeah. All that other stuff is is fluff, and I, I, I always say this is somebody that I've been um, working with, doing workshops at their studio. It's like I want to. I walk in nothing, just you know, just I always wear black, but just just plain, no special anything, you know, just for the for the sheer fact of like it's not about the pomp and circumstance, it's not the yeah. the ceremony, and you know, like the fanfare. It's really like I literally don't need. It any of that to work, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and I yeah. think it's just like, get over the image, get over the buying things. I kind of got a beef about the whole crystal thing too, because I'm like, is that ethical? Is it being mine from, you know, like I love mm-hmm. them. I have plenty of them, but you know what? You need to be conscientious about everything about consumption, all of it. Um, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I didn't mean yeah. to, but you know, no, like, it, no, I was going to say it's, it's all good. And I think at the end of the day, number one is like the ego has to leave. Yeah. And um, number one, I mean, when it comes to whether you're doing your own healing or healing others, it's like the ego has to leave. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? I had something that was really important that I was going to touch on is um, the openness. I mean, 
you know, you can't judge others for the journey that they're on. And I yeah. see that so much that it's like, it, it, it's vulnerable. And there are things that we do as practitioners, you know, same thing. It's like, I've invested two years into this, thousands of dollars, um, time. I mean, tears, painful, painful things from my childhood that resurfaced that I had to work through. And um, it's a lot of work and to get to where we can even start working on people. I mean, and we're not sharing that with everyone all the time. And Mm -hmm. so I think that's where it gets missed is you know, if you look at my Instagram, I have great pictures. I have a content director that I work with. We take pretty pictures and, you know, stuff like that when I'm doing certain services to market. And I want that, you know, I want that, I want that clean look, um, on my Instagram, but you know, I don't need to share and I'm, you know, I'm not going to share some of the deep stuff that I go through that has allowed me to step into this, this role as a healer, um, because it's mine, it's my personal journey. It's my thing. Um, but I think that's where it gets twisted is there, you know, we have to have respect for, you know, everyone that is healing to some extent and know that everyone's kind of on their own journey. Yeah, absolutely. This industry is getting so competitive and it's sad because it's like, there's plenty of clients for everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, if I have a client that doesn't, you know, I kind of set the boundary. If I have clients that don't want to do meditation and breath work, then I usually pass them off to, you know, one of my other employees that, we'll still give them a really good service, but like, that's me. I, I love that. Like, I want yeah. that. That's, that's who I am. That's my brand is yes. the breath yeah. work and meditation. That's my brand. Yeah. So if you're going to, if you're going to get with me, you got to be carefree or whatever. There's that song. <laughs> I think the Spice Girls, the Spice Girls song that came oh, to my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. No, but it's true. It's <laughs> like, you know, I mean, God, when I, when I kind of like, you know, finished and walked away from my whole background and all these patients I'd had for a million years. It was like, this is just the the evolution of, of who, who you are and who you want, you know, like the work that you want to be doing and, and the space that you want to be taking up in the world. And sometimes that doesn't, it, it, it changes over time. Um, and and, you know, what, what you're aligned with or, or what you feel comfortable and confident enough, you know, it's like, I was always that person, but I didn't used to talk about it with people because it wasn't, it wasn't super accepted. And now, you know, and we said, now it's trendy. So, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) you know, I just love that so many people are trying it and stepping into it. And, you know, of course they're nervous, but once they're done with the session, um, they're like, wow, because it's, there's a book. Um, I think it's called, I can't remember the name of it. I just read it of course, but they talk about how silence, like at the top of your breath is true silence. And so when I'm working with clients, it's what we focus on is true silence and focusing on the top of your breath. And we don't reach that point a lot as humans, we're so bombarded with things that it's like, we don't ever stop at the top of our breath and reach true silence very often. But when you can, and you do, that's when you start healing. Um, and so, yeah, love that. Love that. true that's silence. I, I, I'm into it. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, you know, like, um, after, after we went off on our, on our tangents, <laughs> I am known to go on one. Um, what, you know, with, with you having such an open chart, you know, kind of as a beauty practice, what is some of your favorite deconditioning, you know, like to, you know, like I said, going out and grounding, meditating, being out in nature, do you have specific things you really love to do? Mm-hmm. Um, so journaling is something that I don't journal every day. Um, I journal when I feel called to, I think okay. it's too much pressure to be like, Oh, I have to journal every morning and every night. Okay. Um, cause sometimes I just don't know what to talk about. Um, and then I'm ranting and it's just, yeah. Anyway. So I really like, uh, writing my meditations. That's a huge deconditioning for me. And I usually write a meditation usually comes forward when there's something that maybe I'm struggling with, or I notice like my team is struggling with, like I wrote one on imposter syndrome a couple months ago, cause I noticed that we were all in this like wheelhouse of focusing on like Instagram. We, some people are like, I'm not posting enough. My, so my, my Instagram doesn't look as pretty, whatever. So um, 
you know, just, I just write and free flow and the words come out. Um, so writing and recording the meditations is great. I do like movement. So dancing, listening to a lot of music. And then, uh, my therapist, she introduced me and she, um, I have, I have a couple different therapists that I work with for different things, but, um, uh, my therapist that does a lot with my childhood trauma and stuff. She introduced me to cellular hypnotherapy, um, where you, listen to the meditation. Usually it's words just repeated over and over again, uh, while you sleep. And that has been probably my favorite deconditioning practice, because again, as a practitioner, I'm around people, I'm around their energy a lot. And so every other week it's a five days on, um, there is one that's 21 days, but it's like, you better be ready for a full wipeout. <laughs> ah, um, cool. But the, the cellular hypnotherapy, I do five, I do five nights on and day six. I usually plan it's where my day six is, of course, on a weekend um, where I can just, the pressure comes off. Um, I try to make sure I'm outside doing stuff. Um, and then just my own meditation work, uh, just really breathing, taking time to pay attention to what I'm doing, making sure things are done with intention. Um, I personally don't do a lot with crystal work. I mean, I have crystals around me. Um, I carry some with me sometimes. Uh, it really just depends on my mood. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. So I love, um, I love that. Clients. Yeah. Well, I love that you mentioned, um, the journaling thing because, you know, like I said, you're, you're a gate 33, I'm a gate 33 person and I am a real, I am an every night journaler, but it's not necessarily like you you're like, I don't know what to talk about. I'm like, I recount my day. You know, like, yeah. I'm just like, this is, you know, because I'm always like, oh, like a lot of the times it's just, yeah, mundane things, but I want to remember something one of the kids said, or, you know, maybe something really cool did happen. And I'm always just like, just, it's really kind of like for me to look back, but gate 33, um, part of, part of it's more of low expression. It's like, it's, it can be very forgetful and I am. And so this yeah. is why I do a lot of this writing. So 33 is one that I make, if you have it, I'm like, oh, journal. I, I think everybody should journal, but I'm like, especially yeah. a 33 person because what it's really doing, it's, it's part of, um, it's part of the collective, like sensing circuitry, but it's like, it's about looking back and making mm -hmm. sense of the past. It's one of the gates of aloneness in the chart. And so it's like those of us that have it, um, we need significant amount of alone time basically to process. And the whole, I remember thing is that we're, we're, we're remembering, you know, we're, we're retreating to, to, to strengthen all of that stuff, but we're retreating to remember, um, again, where the journaling comes in. And then it's like, oh, I collect all this data and all these information and experiences and stories and whatever. And then I am able to tr process, this is why I need the alone time. I process it. And then I turn it into wisdom to share with other people. And so mm -hmm. that's why I think, oh, a 33 person I'm like in journaling to me is invaluable for that reason alone. It's like, you just don't know what you're going to collect and then wind up being like, oh my God, this, you know, the light bulb comes on yeah. there. So just FYI. Um, well, and mine's like, when I write mine is kind of, I guess it's not quite poetry, but it's very, it's not like, I don't write sentences. Like I don't, it just kind of comes through as a story, but yeah. And I use an app called stoic. I don't like my handwriting is so bad. Um, so I use an app called stoic and it does, you can do morning, afternoon, evening journaling. And then what I really like about it is at the end of the day, um, this isn't sponsored by the way, by stoic, yeah. <laughs> this comment, <laughs> guess I should put that out there. Um, but it gives you exercises. So I turn a lot of my clients over to this app, um, because most people are on their phones at night anyway. Um, I try to get them to like take 30 minutes off before bed, but, um, it'll lead you into an exercise. You can choose more journaling, breath work, or meditation. You can do two minutes, four minutes, or I think six minutes. Um, and then after you're done, it goes back and it checks back in. Like, how are you feeling? Do you want more time? Yada, yada. And so I, and I do a lot of voice recording. So if something pops in throughout the day, I'll do a voice recording and then I'll go back and like expand from that too. Oh my God, so. I love that because again, your your authority of like being, you know, like speaking it out and like hearing yourself back is so important. So, absolutely, cosign cosign that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what are what are some of your favorite like as far as far as beauty stuff goes? Like, what are some of your favorite products and procedures? 
Ooh, um, I really, I'm not a machine person. Uh, I, I mean, I have machines, and you know, of course I like the results that come from them, but my hands, I just learned early on that your hands were designed to fit in every part of your face and body. And so, uh, you know, listening to your hands, I, I have this deep connection with my hands that I, uh, close my eyes actually during the massage. And I just, wherever the hands tell me to go, I go. So my massage really isn't like standard it changes for every client and what their body needs that day um so you know my favorite is just the massage portion uh and then products i have so many um there's a brand uh called little Fo- little fox miami yes. um i'm obsessed with her stuff i've been using it for years um and i do like uh cosmetics is a line that we carry here there's my go-tos are toners. I don't know why I really like toners, just the fresh, even just like water. Like I have a fridge over here that I keep just like the Caudalie water uh-huh. um, just as a refresh during the day. So um, if you had to hold a gun to my head and tell me like which product is my absolute favorite ever, um, I have a product in my skincare line. Um, it's called A3SN and it's a brightening serum that... I've had for years that just really transforms the skin. I can't live without it. Is that so, a cosmetics one? Um, it's called Routine Skincare. So it's oh, my it's own yours. Skincare line. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, hey, yeah. all right, I love so, it. So, um, it's a. Uh, it would probably, it's like my ride or die. I couldn't be without it. So, love, love yeah. that. Well, this funny lips. Lip. Uh, I am. A, I'm. I'm a lip junkie. Okay. I love. I love lip plumpers, lip hydrators. So. Um, yeah, I have to throw that out there that any lip products, you're like, I don't care what, (laughs) no, (laughs) I actually, I told Josh, I was like, I'm going to come and make him do my, my next, uh, my next injections when I get my lips done again. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I am obsessed with, um, it's a brand called wild grace. It's an Ayurvedic line of French Canadian wine. And Mm -hmm. she has, um, there it's vanilla cardamom lip balm um but then there's one that's tinted i'm i mean like crazy Uh, crazy about this and i know her and stuff but um but also lil fox like she has alexis has um a lip balm that's really nice from that too and it's a mm -hmm. jazz is it a jasmine neroli one which are oils that i love but have you tried since you love the mist um I know Alexis, like, and so when uh, she and and our other friend that I had mentioned earlier, Ashley, were here, we did it. We did a workshop together, and um, she gave me a bunch of stuff. But they have um, one of her misses, Subiaki. It's a green tea. Oh my god! I, is that her new? Is that a new? I think that's a new one. I had. Don't think I've, yeah. I've tried that one yet. They were. I remember seeing that ingredient, and I was like, "Oh, I've never heard of this one." There, it's. It was like a three set of like smaller mist toners. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. It was like it was like Tulsi. Oh, green melon. It was like the green ones. I think it was like a holiday one. And then Subi- Subiaki is like okay. my jam. I'm super, again, gate 19, super sensitive. And it's like, yeah. it's just so gentle. So I'm like, if you love a mist, you have to try that one. It's divine. I'm like, I don't know if she's going to make that part of like the regular thing or or what, or like yeah. b- big bottle, please, Alexis. <laughs> yeah, I'm working with them Anymore. actually to bring the line on. Oh, heck yeah. Um, because of the experience. I just, I, I love it for my own beauty rituals at home. The Aura Soak is just, and then the Blue Lagoon Mask. Um, oh, those are like my two, I was all, just going to say oh. that. The blue is already. I'm drawn so to blue. And, I love yep. the dark blues, but yep. that aura soak, man, it just, when I do like my bath rituals, it takes me out of this world. Yeah. Um, so she's done a beautiful, a beautiful job with this line. I can remember um, when it first came out, I was just blown away, but um, and I loved her story, but yeah. Yeah. I'm jealous that you know her. Ah! I, it's, I've always wanted to meet her because she's just amazing. Like just, she just has this iconic, aura that I can see through like her social media. And then I, of course I was on the phone with her when I first was looking at the brand. Um, but she's done a beautiful job with that line. It's just sexy and sleek and yeah. the experience and ugh. right. Right. I mean, th- that's exactly it. You just think it's just, ah, it's everything. I want to walk through her house. Cause oh I'm sure God. it just smells like a jungle. Right. <laughs> oh, I, I, she, she is just such a, 
she has just such a fun energy to, you know, yeah. how some people are just like, they're just, they're just that bitch. Like she's, she, yeah. that's her, you know, she is. she's yeah. not Am Fox, right? Yeah, I just like <laughs> love it. I'm like, Hmm, wow. You never know. Maybe have to have to craft something up, but um, yes. a little, a little, some collab or something. Um, so yeah, like, I guess, I guess that's kind of me asked, shoot. I would, I got my, what do you keep in your bag? Let's, let's, let me ask that last one. What do you keep in your Ooh. sort of like everyday toting around? Which bag? <laughs> <laughs> you know, parent life, we've got several bags. Oh um, my God. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, in my bag right now, I like my, cro- my crossover. Yeah. I have, <laughs> this is, this is embarrassing. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, I have, I'm trying to, I have three different lip products. Yeah. I have, I keep my AirPods in there. Um, I don't like to carry wallets. I stopped carrying wallets just for back issues years ago. Um, and I'm usually in athletic wear all the time. Um, so my wallet's in there, but I always keep uh, snack bars for my kids. And yes. funny story, I, I keep, um, so I'm plant-based, but, um, I do spoil myself with Pringles. So I keep a can of Pringles in the middle console Bye. of my car okay. at all times, <laughs> not in my bag, but, um, and then yeah, I keep always, I always have something in there for my teeth. I'm a, I, lips and teeth are my thing on people and myself. So, um, oh always have God. to have a good floss, a good pick, uh, yeah. And oh, then wait. I'm dying I because, because you, your primary cognition I already mentioned is inner vision, but your secondary one is taste. So it's like the fact that you're mm. concerned with like mouth, you know, all that. I'm like, oh, interesting. You know, there's, there's always a correlation there that cracks me up. And yes, I'm like being, being snack, snack master for your children. I'm like, I feel yeah. you on that one. Totally. Well, the, one I didn't ask you though, um, favorite essential oils. Ooh. So I like anything that's earthy and that, I mean, I'm very, I don't, there's one I've never been able to pinpoint it. Um, so there, I used to see another esthetician in town for a while and she had created this blend and it was like her proprietary secret blend. But when you used it, you just, I immediately envisioned a night sky. Um, it was mm. beautiful. And so anyway, there's a, there's just, there is a bright, there's an essential oil that's very bright. That's in my like olfactory system that I'm trying to hunt down. But, um, so Palo Santo is my jam. Um, I'm trying to think of what I have like around me at home that I keep really close to that of your sandalwood. Um, I love like a smoked, a smoky smell. Um, yeah, I think it's because of, I mean, for me, I feel like with my fire energy, I'm just so kind of lit up all the time that I have to have a lot to bring me down at the end of the day. And then I use, um, there's a product called uh, love magic. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a spray and, um, it's like a pillow spray. But when I'm doing, um, work with my husband, uh, when we do like our connection, energetic work, um, it affects the vagus nerve, which, you know, of course activates your parasympathetic system for healing and connection. Um, and so that is a really nice blend, but you have rose. Um, I think there's, um, some geranium in there, which I'm not a big flower person, Mm -hmm. but, um, I actually do not like flowers. Um, we just created a blend, uh, for my spa, a signature fragrance that our base note is dirt. They are able to recreate the scent of dirt. Um, so it smells really good Mm -hmm. if you like dirt. I, I do. I like those <laughs> smells. Have you, and speaking of, I'm like, I feel like I've been talking about this so much, but a little Fox's cedar fever. Have you, oh, tra- have yes, you tried? Oh cedar. my God. I haven't tried that, oh, but anything cedar, especially what is it? The, is it the Atlas cedar? Yes. I think is in a, yeah, I think it's an Atlas cedar that just like I melt. You've got, and I like to, it on you- people you've got to like get some of it like if you're bringing them on like you will die it's yeah it is that earthy just super and you know and and this is again what i was talking with ash because my friend who who i keep referencing is like she's their lead trainer 
she's little Fox's, you know, head okay. gal, right? So um, she's the other one that has a super open chart. And I'm like, for those of us that are like that, it's like, we really, I think, gravitate toward those grounding things because mm-hmm. you're so airy and ready to like float away, you know? So I love, I love having those ones that, that feel very, very earthy and bring you down, you know, when, yeah, we, we need that. <laughs> and I like, a like, um, I'm trying to think of what it is. There's one that it's very grassy, but, um, I lost it thinking about it, but I also, I don't, again, I don't like flowery blends too much. Um, Mm -hmm. but like the grasses and like the leaves and, um, I like those essential oils too, but if, yeah, if I had to pick one essential, it would be like, it would be Palo Santo. Love it. Love it. I use that in a, in a nice special secret blend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) It's so good. Well, I love all of that. Um, well, great. Um, how about you let everybody know where we can find you? What projects are you working on right now? And kind of all of that, give us, give us all the details. Yeah. So, um, my, the business website is urbanroutinewellness.com. Uh, my Instagram handle is at the skin underscore experience that's my personal professional page and then um so projects i'm working on right now uh so i haven't talked much about it but i'm creating what's called ceremony blends they are made with charged moon water and they sit under frequencies for 24 hours uh there's three different ones there's a grounding there's an enlightenment and there's a soul seek blend so they all are for different um different meditation practices that we've we've created these proprietary blends for. Um, that's probably my favorite product I'm working on right now. And then um, we are, I'll be launching with my business coach, our higher self beauty activation. And so this is a product neutral training. It's a six month certification uh, where we work on, you know, understanding the archetypes. Um, we train on the an in-depth consultation method, mirror work, and then the actual activation itself uses special uh, special tools that were, um, I, I guess, mathematically created. They uh, they helped a lot of different um, energetic work. I guess is the easy way to put it. But um, that'll be a six month certification that kicks off in June. We're only taking eight professionals for that one. And then I just have my one-to-one business coaching, but, um, this is like my first summer where I'm really stepping back and focusing a lot on my family and traveling and myself because we hit the five-year mark almost for my business. And it's been a lot of work leading up to this, that I just, I'm ready to sit back and relax for a little bit. So Love that. Yeah. And, you know, and taking on that, um, I always like say the projector role, work smarter, not harder, be, you know, the yeah. guide, see where, see what everybody else, the energy can be doing, but you don't have to be, you know, in it. And it's a whole yeah. different perspective and what a beautiful, beautiful way to kind of like do that. I love that. That's amazing. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I loved having you on and getting to chat about all these things. Um, So thank you for joining me. It was so good. Yeah. Thank you. It was so much fun. I'm glad you asked me to do it. And, you know, thank you for the, for the design session. Um, Everyone needs one. I can't, I tell everyone, I'm like, you have to do a human design session. It's so Just funny because it's hard. It's hard for me to explain like what it is exactly that I do, but I'm like, I'm wildly passionate about it. I'm just like, oh, you just, you just have to throw caution to the wind, do it. And you're going to be like, oh. I mean, everybody's always like, my life is completely changed. And I'm like, yeah, no, I know. Help me figure out how to tell me <laughs> what it is. Well, it's that just I do guidance, exactly. you yeah. know, again, like you play that guide role and I think, you know, I, I know again, from my own personal design is, you know, some of the things you brought up, like I knew, but there was so yeah, much I yeah. didn't know. And then in and it's growth. It allows, it allows you to open up and step into a new part of who you are, no matter where you're at in life. Um, totally. And yeah, that's just, that's beautiful in itself. So thank you for doing this of and course. putting this out into the community because it's so needed. I think business owners should do it. 
everyone yeah. should do it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty magical. Well, I love that. Again, thank you for coming on. Thank you everyone for listening. I will put all of Derek's uh, links in the show notes. And of course, until next time, have a beautiful day.